Hello everyone and welcome to another video. The new high maintenance version of Annie would like to introduce you to James Nick. Hello pretty, he said. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, said Annie. I'm Nick from Germany. And you? I live in Shaftesbury, she said. It's a small town in England. But are you from England, he asked, or you leave there? Why would I want to leave? asked Annie. I mean live, he said. I've lived here all my life, said Annie. Why do you want to know? Did you think I was someone else? Not really, he said. You look like an American. Oh no, said Annie, I'm not American. Where in Germany are you? she asked. I'm currently at Frankfurt, he said, but I'm from Berlin. OK, she said. Do you live in Frankfurt or are you just visiting? I live there, he said, because I work here. What do you do? she asked. I'm an engineer, he said. What kind of engineer? asked Annie. I deal with building constructions, both interior and exterior house designs, he said. I apologise for the instant confusion here because our conversation has now gone from newest at the bottom to newest at the top. And that's because Facebook deleted his fake account while I was making this video and before I'd screenshotted everything and saved it. That sounds more like an architect, said Annie. Yes, said our man, having an instant change of career. I'm an architect. Do you know about buildings? What do you mean? asked Annie. I live in one. I work in one. I know. I mean building constructions, he said. Not much beyond bricks and stone and thatch, she said. And so he sent her a photograph of a room. What's that photo? asked Annie. That's one of my interior designs, he said. You mean you're an interior designer? she asked. Yes, he said, having yet another instant change of career. I have my own company, explained. Many people work for me and they have different works to do. So which one are you really? She asked, or are you just trying to impress me? Why should I try to impress you with this? He said. I have no idea, said Annie. Why I handle all that, he said, is because I do win contracts having all that. Yes, but what are you? She asked. I'm an architect, he said. I'm glad we cleared that up. What about you? he asked. I work on the checkouts at our local supermarket, she said. OK, that's cool, he said. I guess you're married. Annie told him that she was divorced with grown-up twins. And then he said, I was married, but my wife died. Do you have kids? asked Annie. But most painful part is that she died while delivery. No kids. The baby died. Do you have several projects that you work on? She asked. For now, he said, there is no current project. Oh dear, said Annie. How do you pay your staff if there isn't any work? So I work all day at work, he said, sending mails to different countries. I work alone, said the man who a few minutes ago told Annie that many people worked for him. I guess it's hard to remember whether you have lots of employees or none. And then he suggested that they move to Hangouts. Over on Hangouts, he told Annie that he had to go back to work. Then, a couple of hours later, messaged her to say that he was home. It's almost 6pm, said Annie. Time to make some dinner. What work did you have to do? Wow, replied our man. I'm at home now. Just need to eat dinner. Yes said Annie. What work did you have to do? Just want to take my shower, he said. I can't cook today. I will go to a restaurant to eat. OK, said a resigned Annie. Last time, what work did you have to do? I don't really understand that question, he said. You mean at work? Where else would you work, said Annie. You told me you would go home from work. How hard can it be to remember what you were doing while you were at work? I told you, he said, I was seeking for contract by sending mails to different companies. Oh, she said, I hope you manage to find something soon. Thank you so much, he said. I really hope so, because it's been long. I won a contract. Then he started asking Annie about her work. 
How do you see your work? He said. Boring, she said. I hate it. You like it? He said. Why? At least they pay you well. I just told you. I hate it, she said. And the pay is awful. So bad, he said. I understand. Annie, I'm getting late. I need to rush to a close restaurant for my dinner. I'll talk to you when I'm back. OK. A couple of hours later, probably after having talked to other potential victims, our man returned and clearly had no idea where they'd left the conversation. OK, he said. Are you at home already? Did you manage to find some dinner? asked Annie. Yes, he said. What do you mean already? She said, I never went out. I thought you were at work, he said. No, said Annie. What made you think that? Nothing, he said. I was imaginating. Sorry about that. I like that word, though. I think I'm going to remember that one for future use. They talked about food, well, you do with scammers. And then he said, but the day was stressful. Oh, dear, said Annie. Why? Today, I was communicating with the Philippine government for a contract, he said, but I haven't gotten a position result. Oh, she said, I hope you get it. And it won't be long before you hope he gets it too, because this guy just went on for days, and for a lot of the time, not saying very much. Then he asked Annie about her children. I wish I have a child, he said. Have you thought about sponsoring a child in a poorer country? She asked. Countries like he said. I don't know. You'd have to contact one of the organisations that works with communities and ask them. Well, he said, I do go to the motherless baby home. Christian Aid Plan International? They have those in Germany. I'm surprised. I'm feeding many of them, he said. Yes, of course. I'm surprised, said Annie. In the UK, orphan babies are fostered or adopted. Each time I'm back from a contract, I do go there to give them some money, he said. I thought it was only Eastern European countries that still had homes like that. What's the home called? Not really, he said. Do you know any here? I sincerely apologise for the next bit, and I hope that it doesn't offend anyone. I'm only reproducing what he said. What do you mean? asked Annie. I don't live in Germany, and we don't have homes for orphan babies in the UK. What's the home that you go to called? OK, he said, hitting Google and coming back with our back orphanage 162. And I apologise because I don't know how to pronounce the next bit. Schar in Hauser Allee, Berlin. He told Annie he was 52 and she told him she was 55. And then he told her how beautiful she was. You and I knows what I'm saying is the truth, he said. You're gorgeous. That's very kind of you, she said. I try my best, but it's hard looking your best when you don't have money for all the treatments you need. This is the new high maintenance version of Annie. Really, he said. How much is involved for your treatment? Yes, she said. Look all those awful lines round my eyes. I hate them. Small talk then set in, with our man putting in the occasional fishing question. The scammers can be quite subtle about this subtly asking if you own your own home, or in this case, what's the name of your car? I call her a rose. Why? said Annie. I have a Land Rover, he said. Is there any car by name Rose? Well, that's the name you choose to give. You ask me her name, not her make, said Annie. She's a Renault Clio. Annie told him she'd been at work that day, and he said, you really deserve to rest. Have you taken your shower? I don't need a rest, said Annie. I need something interesting to happen. Something like, he said. I want to travel, said Annie, or win the lottery so I can have a nice house with a swimming pool and lots of lovely jewellery. That's a nice wish, he said. A girl can dream. Believe me, it will come if you believe and work hard, he said. I wish I believed that, said Annie. So, why can't you believe, he asked. How am I going to be able to afford a nice house with a swimming pool on the rubbish pay at the supermarket? And here we go. He's fishing for more financial information. How much do they pay you? He asked. £9.76 an hour, said Annie. So in a week, it comes out how much? He asked. I work 40 hours a week, said Annie. 
but I have to pay national insurance, pension scheme and income tax. That's so much to pay, he said. I get extra for my ex-husband, she said, but he lied to the court about how much money he has, so he doesn't pay me very much. How much do he pay you? asked our man, fishing for yet more information. Sometimes he conveniently forgets to pay, she said. He's supposed to pay me £500 a month. If the person that you're talking to online starts asking you for exact figures about how much you earn or how much your monthly income is, just ask yourself who you might be talking to. Why do they need to know? Why do they want to know? What was your day at work like? she asked. Today was cool, he said. At least I rested a lot. You mean you didn't do any work? said Annie. Not that much. Tomorrow I will have a lot of work to do. What will you be doing tomorrow? she asked. There is one of my unfinished projects I will be going to supervise tomorrow, said the man who earlier on told her that he didn't have a project. And I'll be making new building plans. For the contract in the Philippines or someone else? she asked. I mean the one here in Germany. The one in Philippine, I'm not sure yet, he said. So I will sending more mails to different countries as well. I thought you didn't have any work in Germany, she said. It's almost done. I just need to go there to check for the last time. You told me you didn't have a contract. Realising what he'd said, a man had to come up with an excuse. I've been paid for a very long time, he said. So to me, it's not a project. Because it's done already. I don't understand that, said Annie. Whatever. He sent a couple of laughing faces. You mean they've been paying you regularly for so long that you've forgotten you're working for them? She asked. A single contract can make me rich for a year, he said, depending on the contract. So rich you forget you're working for them? She said. Not really, he replied. The next day, a man's thought inevitably turned to love. I think I've fallen in love with you, he said. You're so sweet and lovable. You better come to Shaftesbury then so I can meet you, she said. I will do all my best to come to your country, he said. You can take me somewhere nice, she said. Sure, he said. Tell me where you like. A nice hotel with a treatment spa. I could get a manicure and get my eyebrows waxed and get a facial, she said. This is where my friend goes she said, sending him a link to Ragdale Hall. What's this? he said, suspiciously, because being a scammer, he's used to people sending him dodgy tracking links. For once, I didn't. That was a genuine link. What do you mean, what's this? asked Annie. It's one of the best spa hotels. It's where my friend goes. I told you, she goes to Ragdale Hall. Really? said her scammer. Yes, really said Annie. Is it because? he said. I told you, she said, because of what? You asked me to tell you where I liked. That's where I want to go. Then I will take you there, he said. Would you? said Annie. How exciting. I can't wait. So, when we get there, what next? he asked. What do you mean? asked Annie. How long can you come for? I'll be there soon, he said. Oh my, she said. When do you think you'll be able to come? I don't know for now, he said, but I will tell you when it's possible. Oh my goodness, said Annie. I don't know what to say. Wait till I tell them at work. They'll be so jealous. Really? said our man. Oh yes, really, she said. What are you going to tell them? That I've met this lovely man who's going to take me to nice places and pamper me and treat me like a lady. Will you buy me nice things? Anything you want, just tell me, he said. Can I tell you what I've always wanted, she said. I don't expect you to buy it for me. I always wanted a diamond ring with matching earrings, she said. Really, said her man. You mean a wedding ring? Is that a proposal, asked Annie. I'd need to meet you first. Doesn't need to be a wedding ring, just a diamond ring with matching earrings. OK, he said. Like, how much? Now that really isn't a question that a gentleman should ask a lady. A bit later, Annie asked him about his contract. But this is from Philippine government, he said, so they can call anyone at any time. Let's forget about that and talk about us. OK, said Annie. 
Tell me about your family, about yourself. I've been thinking about you, like seriously, he said. My son David lives in Salisbury with his partner, Danny, she said. They both work for an insurance company. My daughter Susie lives in Bournemouth with her partner. He's an electrician and Susie works in a care home. My mother lives in Guildford with her new fancy man and I need more fun and excitement in my life. He asked Danny why she didn't have a man in her life. I can't have a man if I haven't met someone, can I? She said, we haven't been able to go out anywhere much. Why don't you have someone? So you only go to work, he said. Well, maybe you do, said Annie. Because of how busy I am every day and because I always isolate myself from people right from the time I was little. Oh, said Annie, I'm not sure I want a man that doesn't know how to socialise. How boring. Not really what I mean, he said, backtracking quickly. I do talk and play with people, but it has limit. It was because of my past experience. So he asked, tell me what you like in a man. I like a man that treats a woman with respect, she said, and who knows how to pamper her. I want nice things. My ex was too much of a tight-fisted b****. He never took me anywhere or bought me anything. He tried to get out by me this house, but my solicitor forced him to. So, he bought you a house, said our hopeful scammer, fishing for more financial information. Well, to me, I sees women as special people. We're supposed to pamper them and make them feel like they're the most important and beautiful woman on earth. He had to buy the house, said Annie. It was part of the divorce settlement. We'd been married for over 30 years. Sunday dawned, along with a scammer's urge to prove that he was, well, a scammer, by asking, did you go to church today? No, said Annie. Did you? About to, he said. What's your religion? Why do you want to know, said Annie. You don't discriminate against people on grounds of religion, do you? Never, he said. Why should I do that? I don't have one, said Annie. Really, said our man. But why? Yes, really, said Annie. Why should I? Most people who claim to be religious are just saying they are without even knowing what it means. How many people claim to be Christian, yet lie and steal, and don't even know what the Ten Commandments mean, or fight wars in the name of religion? Yeah, you're right, he said. It's obvious many people don't know what it means. You are so beautiful too, he said a bit later, and you're kind. This few days is just like weeks we've known each other. I wish I was beautiful, said Annie. That's why I want to go to Ragdale, get my treatments done. I really like talking to you, he said. How lovely, said Annie. Trust me, you're so beautiful, he said. You're gorgeous. I really wish I can have one of your pictures, he said, so I can be looking at it each time I guess about your face. My pictures are on Facebook, she said. I deleted my Facebook yesterday, he said. Haven't you checked? Wondering whether she'd noticed that his fake account had been deleted. Why did you do that? asked Annie. No, why would I check? I'm talking to you here. So she sent him one of the two photos that she now has on Facebook. Actually, she's going to take one off so that she has one in reserve to send them when they ask. They're both completely made up photos from a website that, well, makes up photos. Is this the only picture you have? he said. Is the one I saw on Facebook. There are two on there said Annie. So you don't need another one, do you? They made a bit more small talk. And then Annie said, Hi, I thought you were going to check the Ragdale Hall prices. Good morning, honey, he said. I have accepted to pay any amount. Oh, hi, how exciting, she said. At least we can spend $20,000, he said. Oh my goodness, said Annie. I didn't realise it was that expensive. Are you sure? And another clue there that you're talking to a scammer when they start talking about large amounts of money. There was a lot of talk about how wonderful he was and about how well his mother had brought him up. And then Annie said that evening, I'd love to see some of your designs. Where have your designs been used? They are at office, he said. I will show you tomorrow. I will send some to you. No, she said. I mean, where are some of the buildings? 
Can I see them on Street View? Previous designs that have already been built. So he sent her a flurry of photos, as the scammers sometimes do, claiming that they were his designs. I've just reproduced four of them here. I sent them to my online researcher, Dr Watson. It didn't take long for her to find some of them. They were all in the UK. I think she said most of them were in London. And some of them have won awards. Awesome, said Annie. Where are they? Here in Germany, he said. Where, she asked. Can I see them on Street View? I don't understand, he tried. Google Street View, she said. Which streets in which towns are those houses on? OK, he said. There's one in Goethe Street, but you don't know anywhere in Germany. The next day's talk was all meaningless small talk. And then the following evening, he said, I have a Christmas present for you, my love. Oh my, said Annie. It's a bit early for Christmas presents. What is it? I will buy you any car of your choice when I get there. Oh, how exciting, said Annie. I always wanted a BMW convertible in white. Wow, that's good, said our man. How much is it in dollars? So Annie hit Google. Oh my word, she said. I didn't realise how expensive they were. Never mind, a girl can dream, but I still want to go to Ragdale Hall. How much is it? he asked. So she sent him a screenshot, saying that a BMW 4 Series convertible cost from £45,000. And now, for that all-important question. What do you think he said? Honey, that's too expensive. You can go for a cheaper one. I really don't think he's the man of your dreams, Annie. You might want to reconsider. My sister came to stay for a few days, so Annie made up an excuse about her daughter having an accident and needing her. And then a bit of silliness ensued. You know how Annie, well, let's be honest, me, likes to wind up the scammers when they say something that doesn't mean what they think it means. Annie asked him about his contract that he'd applied for in the Philippines. What's the contract for? she asked. It's a building contract, he said. Yeah, I know that, silly, she said. That's what you do. But building what? A company, he said. You're building a company? What does that mean? asked Annie. A company's building, he said. Why don't you understand? Why don't I understand? asked Annie. Because you told me you were building a company. That's not the same as building an office block or a shopping centre or workshop complex or whatever is it? What are you building? The contract is to build a company. Manufacturing company, he said. To build a company, said Annie. I thought you were an architect. Did you change careers and now you're starting a new business? What will the company manufacture once you've set it up? I don't really know what they will manufacture there, he said. I will know when I win the contract. I make building plans and I build them. How can you bid for a contract to set up a new company if you don't even know what kind of company you'll be setting up? That doesn't make any sense, said Annie. What do you mean? asked our hapless scammer. Surely you have to be highly experienced in an industry to start a new company from scratch, she said. My own business is to make the drawing build the company. What they want to do with it is none of my business, but I will definitely know when I win the contract. If you're going to build a company, you must know what you'll be doing, said Annie. Or are you so stupid that you don't know the difference between building an office block building and building a company? Because I begin to think you have no idea what you're actually doing or what the contract is actually for. So if you tend to build an office block when really what they want is someone to set up a new company, then you won't get the contract, will you? And if you've tendered to build a new company and they really want someone to build an office block, then you also won't get the contract. This is my job. I know it very well, he said. Clearly you don't, said Annie. So which is it? I've been doing this for years now. Trust me, I will win this contract. Are you A, constructing a new building or B, building up a new company from scratch? She asked. You can answer A or B to make it easier. Because Annie by then, well, I was getting fed up with him. We'd made days of small talk. A, he said, constructing a new building. 
Okay, she said, so you aren't building a company, you're building an office. I'm glad we cleared that one up, she said, stealing my line. Then, a man entered the time warp. Apparently you can do that in Germany. Who knew? What's the time there now? he asked later that day. It's nearly five o'clock, said Annie. Here too, he said. Really? said Annie, stealing the scammer's usual line, because Germany is an hour ahead of the UK. So, what's for dinner? he asked. Am I invited? Do you want to try again with the time? she asked. How? asked our hopelessly lost man. What I said, she said. What's the time? 4.49pm, he said. In Frankfurt? she asked. Yeah, he said. Which bit of Frankfurt are you in? she asked. The time warp side. And then added facetiously, Google will assist you. OK, he said. I'm from Frankfurt, AM Main. I don't understand what you mean. What does AM Main mean? she asked. Frankfurt, AM Main, he said. Do you understand now? Yes, she said. But what does AM Main mean? Is it part of Frankfurt? Yes, honey, he said. OK, said Annie. Well, Google will assist you with the time in Frankfurt like this. And she sent him a screenshot of where she just asked Google what the time in Frankfurt was. And that's how she knew that Frankfurt was an hour ahead of the UK. Starting to get confused, our man said, Good, can show the general time, but there are cuties with one hour behind. Really? said Annie. I never knew that. Must make it hard for their working residents if they have to have meetings with those other cuties. We're used to it, he said. It's the same to different countries. So which cutie are you in? she asked. And please keep the comments clean below. Obviously not Frankfurt. So where are you? I said, I'm in AM Maine in Frankfurt, he said. Why do you keep asking the same question? And he kept goading him about the time. And he said he'd checked his watch. If your watch is right, then you have a serious problem, she said. I was hoping it was just an issue with your watch being an hour wrong. Because if you really can't use Google to find the time where you live, I wouldn't employ you to do anything, let alone build a large business complex. The penny finally dropped, and her man realised what he'd done. Oh, I'm sorry, he said. It's from my cell phone. The time settings are wrong. I'm sorry, I apologise. Then he asked Annie what her greatest ambition was. My big ambition is to go to New Zealand, she said, when they'll let us in again. When will that be, he asked. How would I know? I don't live there. Where else can we go, she said. I like beach, he said. Miami, she said, Hawaii. In England, he said. Oh, said Annie, I was thinking somewhere much more exotic. They agreed on Miami, and then Annie said, I'll have to go and buy some new clothes for Ragdale and Miami. I can't go in the boring stuff I have for work or at home. That would be great, he said. You have to look like a queen. Oh yes, I do, said Annie. I can't wait to see you, he said. Me too, said Annie. I can't wait to meet you at last. And we can't wait to see whether you get that contract in the Philippines. But unfortunately, we're going to have to because that's episode two. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like it, please share it, please subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in episode two.